guys. This is Robin Halls from the Athletic Academics podcast. And I got David with me. Hi, David. Hi, everybody. So today we are continuing the mini series of uh, college sports and uh, explain basically that we go into depth uh, into the sports that we work the most with here at Athletic Academics. Um, today we are doing a sport that I will probably be as surprised as you guys because rugby is a um, thing here in Sweden who's not super big. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited to, to learn more about college rugby, which is our uh, fifth sport that we dig into deep. Uh, so uh, David speaks slowly now, so, so Swedes can understand too. Um, when does the season take place for, for college rugby and how's the schedule like? Well, uh, firstly, it's uh, it's a real sport, so it's one thing that I know is is getting a little bit bigger in Sweden. And we've I've spoken to a couple of people before from Sweden on the on the women's side, especially that have asked questions about rugby. So um, I hope it becomes a bit bigger in Scandinavia, and you, and you get to to learn and love love it more like I do. But um, uh, yeah, certainly it's uh, been growing enormously in the states in in uh, recent years. Um, with it, with it being such a sort of physical and powerful sport, it's it's always something that you would imagine would be quite popular in America. It just needs to obviously compete with the big American sports to, to get a little bit more exposure. Um, but at college, it's it's grown from strength to strength on the men's and the women's side. And uh, the season is actually sort of split into two different types of seasons. Um, the, the general game of, of rugby, rugby union, is played by 15 players. Um, and so that's kind of referred to as a 15s team, a 15 season. And that's played actually in the springtime. Um, so that, that runs through the spring semester with the kind of playoff systems or the, the end, of, end of season tournaments for those that make it that far taking place in April each year. So that's kind of when that, that wraps up um, and they, they obviously finish for the summer. Um, but in the fall, which is when most people tend to begin their their college careers, uh, not everybody, but most people, there's actually a, a sevens season, which is a, a game of rugby played by seven players. So it's um, still on a full size pitch and it's an extreme athletic workout to play that game. You need to be in incredible shape. Um, but the sevens game has taken off in the US in, in uh, as I say, the last kind of decade or so. Um, and the sevens games and tournaments played are played throughout the fall. Um, the sevens has almost got, in some ways, slightly more popularity among among an American audience. Um, so, and that's really as a result in recent years of it becoming an, an official Olympic sport. So they play sevens at the Olympics, and the U.S. team has has been extremely successful with that. Um, so college games during the sevens seasons are are, are often broadcasted on live television. Um, and certainly those that make it towards the sort of national championship games have played in front of crowds of around 24,000 and above. So it sort of shows how quickly the game has, has exploded um, across the pond. Um, so, yeah, two different types of seasons, sevens in the fall um, and then 15s in the season, uh, sorry, in the spring season, um, make up the kind of full calendar year for college rugby. So when looking at uh, rugby as a sport as a whole, uh, did it, is the original sport or whatever you should call it the, the 15 uh, uh, player system? That's right, yeah. So in rugby union, um, so globally there's two different types of rugby. There's rugby union played by 15 players and uh, rugby league is played by 13 players, which is, is perhaps not as commonly played globally it's popular in america uh, sorry in australia new zealand and obviously in the, the british isles as well but rugby union is probably uh found in more countries on different continents uh, which is the 15s game so that's the original the sevens okay. the sevens version is a kind of new age um spin-off version of rugby um which i don't know exactly when it came into place but it it was certainly been going um, a good sort of 25 years or so, and there's a sevens tournament circuit, professional circuit that that, that goes around the world um, and, and definitely draws in a lot of crowds because the games are very fast-paced and exciting and there's supreme athletes playing it. 
All right, and in the Olympics, is it solely sevens or is it both sevens? It and is 15? At, at the moment, it's just sevens. Yeah, so that's why again right. the popularity has grown in the states because they they've been very good at it, and then a number of colleges have been able to kind of classify sevens rugby as a, as an Olympic sport, and therefore just they're then justified in in uh, bringing forward more funding for rugby. Yeah. All right. Interesting. You see, I'm I'm learning too. Yes, sir. So how, how would me thinking rugby is a small sport, how many college teams are there offering uh, rugby in, in, in the US? There's a lot. There's up to around 900 colleges that have some form of rugby, whether that be as a varsity sport or as a club sport. So there is then various range of, of sort of levels of, of how, how organized and competitive it is. Um, but they're at the top end where it's very competitive and organized, um, it, the men's rugby is not actually governed by the NCAA or the NAIA, like a number of the other sports we've spoken about this week. Um, it's actually governed by USA Rugby, who also run the kind of national team and various other parts of the, of the game as well. Um, mm. And within the within USA Rugby, um, colleges are categorized into sort of different divisions. So the, the sort of premier category is is known as D1A, and that that consists of 67 teams uh, across America. Um, so from those 67 teams, they're split into eight different conferences. So there's roughly around eight, maybe nine teams per conference. Um, and all of those teams obviously play each other throughout the seasons every year. Um, and the top two seeds, as in the top two rankings uh, at the end of uh, that season, progress into a kind of uh, what they call in America a Sweet 16 national tournament. So the sort of top 16 teams, two from each of the eight conferences, uh, come to a, a national tournament. And, and then that, that's where they can be competing against other colleges from the other side of, of America if, if they get drawn against them. Mm. Um, so that leads forward into the kind of D1A national tournament game, which is obviously the, the kind of premier um, championship matchup game you, you, could, you could find in college rugby each year. Um, the number of schools such as California, Berkeley, um, St. Mary's in, in California, uh, Life University in Georgia are, are among some of the strongest um, and regularly kind of competing for the national title. But there's actually other divisions, including D1AA, um, which uh, consist of more than 150 colleges. Um, and they're a com- those schools are a combination of varsity and club sports. So they have varying degrees of funding and um, ability to kind of put forward money towards travel and competition. Um, and they all compete in regional conferences as well. So there's, there's a lot, a lot of uh, rugby offered and they're all very kind of welcome to, to bringing in international players where possible. Mm. Um, and how is it on the women's side? Yeah, so with, with women's, that's been one of the fastest growing sports in total over the last sort of 20 years. Um, rom- women's rugby is, is, uh, does fall under the NCAA governance, unlike the men's. Um, and it's considered by the NCAA an emerging sport. So that's kind of meant it's, it's, it's gathered enough momentum in more colleges offering women's, women's rugby over the years that they classify it now as an emerging sport. Um, and it is then allowed to count towards um, what's something called Title IX that we, we mentioned in an earlier podcast on one of the other sports, uh, which is just about kind of gender equality and the same opportunities and scholarship funding for female athletes as there are for male uh, athletes. So it's beginning to be considered um, more commonly uh, as a sport that can be used for that, which benefits female players, of course. Um, mm. So yeah, the women's um, women's rugby is is the, the elite end of women's rugby, in, in that that's a sort of top twenty one or so college teams um, come under the National Intercollegiate Rugby Association, the NIRA, um, and that's where they compete. But there's sort of beyond that, hundreds of other colleges that offer women's rugby as a varsity or club sport on their campus. Mm. All right, interesting. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely something that seems to be seems to be growing. I'm I'm learning a lot here. Uh, how uh, how does the scholarship funding work? Uh, so if if you are a, a rugby player from from anywhere in the world and and are thinking about college, how 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 much scholarship funding can can they find? 
Yep. So there is scholarship funding and, and ways to reduce costs. Definitely. Um, there's no get around the fact that there's definitely not as much funding yet as in rugby as there is in say soccer or swimming or track, for example, um, rugby relies quite heavily on, on kind of, uh, benefactors to rugby programs or donors offering smaller scholarships to players to help offset their sort of college costs. Um, but every university is a little bit different in what they can afford to offer or how they help their, their rugby players from abroad um, shrink their, their overall costs. It's highly unlikely that you would ever get close to a full scholarship to play rugby out there at this stage. Maybe in future when the, the funding continues to develop, that will be possible. Um, but at this stage, it would be partial scholarships. So it's just about making sure we can find realistic possible options for for every individual that they can and they can afford it and and um, go out there and have this fantastic experience um, so colleges can offer various things to, to help in the form of tuition grants um, waivers for your your fees or, or the dues that would be um, required to be part of the rugby team that can be waived to help offset costs and also one of the biggest ways in which that this this you know, to help internationals is by receiving in-state tuition rates instead of international student rates. So, for an international student to attend a school, let's say in North Carolina, um, they are going to pay a lot more than a North Carolina native would pay to go to that particular college. Um, dramatically less so. Probably sometimes even a th they will pay uh, a North Carolina native may pay a third of the price. Let's say. So there's often the case where um, the rugby coaches or, or the programs in general are able to offer an in-state tuition rate, which is significantly cheaper for international students to, to use and therefore makes university more affordable in America. Yeah, all right, nice. And, and I guess they can, they can apply for financial aid and such as well, which, is, which kind of goes into the, to the ones you've spoken to uh, yeah. as well. And academic scholarship, international scholarship, all of those things, you know, we, we would obviously help every rugby player try and maximize every avenue there so that they can, um, you know, get, get the best deal possible for them. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nice. And, um, yeah, um, it's, um, you, you might listen to this and think that, oh, they're, they're probably not interested in, in, in rugby if, if I go over to play there at the school, but, uh, to, to give my own personal experience, I've, I've actually uh, watched a ultimate frisbee game at my school, North Park University. So <laughs> if I could watch an ultimate frisbee game, I would definitely watch a rugby game because the, <laughs> the, the school spirit at college it doesn't it doesn't have any boundaries. They want to be best in all sports possible. So if you are a rugby player, uh, I, I'm assuming and and uh, pro almost guaranteeing that you will have an amazing experience, even though it's a bit of a uh, less popular sport for sure definitely um, it's only it's only going to grow certainly in the next few years as well as um as the sevens game is has is, is definitely been renewed for further future olympics as an olympic sport um in, when when there's olympic gold medals up for grabs you know that the u.s is going to put everything into to to getting those those medals and dominating in in world sports so that that will have a trickling effect down into the college game and um continue you know the growth of it on the men's and women's side so it's uh, it's got a big future over there and it's um a, a fantastic option for um players from whether it be from europe or or, or um the southern hemisphere that, that they can they can look to go out there and and combine rugby with education and, and it's it's uh it's it's something that i think is going to explode all right. And uh, if I'm a rugby player and want to read more, do you have information of that on the website? We do. Yeah. Um, I recently wrote uh, a blog about college rugby not too long ago. So you can find that on our, on our blog page on the UK website. There's more so information that you, you would find on our .com website um, to, to read about rugby. Um, and in addition, there's on the, the menu bar, there's a specific page about college rugby. Um, but if you have questions beyond that, then, then of course, reach out to us via email or on uh, social media, send us a message and or take a free assessment and we'll get back to you and, and ensure that you, you have all the info you need to, to consider college rugby. All right. Amazing. Thanks for the, for the class and the lesson, David, on teaching me how, how to do college rugby. And uh, uh, tomorrow we're back for the final insight, which will be uh, college uh, tennis. Uh, so tune in tomorrow to listen to the last mini series where we go into depth with sports. Thanks, guys, and, and uh, see you all tomorrow. Thanks, all.
Thank you.